What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because the deck that I'm going to be showing you guys which is Sword Soul has been picking up in popularity a ton in today's format especially right now and it makes a lot of sense. This deck has a really good matchup into a lot of the meta game except for tier limits. Now when you build the deck to beat tier limits you have a really good time with this deck. So I want to get right into it but before we do make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. We upload a ton of different kinds of content to the channel here. We do vlogs, combo videos, duels deck profiles all that good stuff now for this deck specifically i'm not showing you guys the combo in this video however i do have combos in another video i'll link that at the top of the description for you guys to check out but if you guys do enjoy these make sure to subscribe the goal is to get to 16,000. i know that's a big goal but the goal is to get to 16,000 for the end of 2023 we have a lot of big things planned and i'm really excited to show it to you guys but first of all i'm getting way out of hand let's get right into the deck profile all right, so just before we get into the deck profile, I do want to say the thing with Sword Soul is it has a really good matchup against pretty much everything in the meta except the tier limit matchup. So what we did in this video is I pretty much built this deck to beat the tier limit matchup because Sword Soul on its own has a pretty good matchup into Fluanderies, into Sprite. So for that reason, it's like, hey, why not build the deck so that you can play the hand traps, play all the cards to beat the tier limit matchup, but then you're also already going to have a really good matchup into a lot of other decks. Also, this deck's been picking up on the popularity. I think it's really exciting that it has. I mean, my last most recent top, I should say, was with Sword Soul. So it's really exciting that this deck is picking up steam again. All right, so let's get right into the deck profile. We are starting off with three Ecclesia. I think Ecclesia is really important to play at three now. Going second is really detrimental in today's format. And just being able to special summon her for free is obviously very powerful. We're playing three Moye as well as three Long Yuan. These Sword Soul ratios are pretty standard. Also, just before I continue with the deck profile here, I do want to say if you guys want to see some Sword Soul combos, check out my combo video. I already have it up on the channel. I'll link it at the top of the description for you guys. So you guys can see how to play this deck, how to do some combos with this deck. But back into the deck profile, we are, of course, playing the three long one, three Moye, and two Taie. I think this is pretty standard sword soul ratios. You really need to play as many of the names as you can. Taie, of course, being kind of the worst one because you need something already in the graveyard. You need to set up for it. So that's why we're only playing the two Taie. Then we're playing three sword soul emergence as well as two blackout. Now, blackout is the one thing, I guess, that you could argue is not standard. People tend to stay on just a single blackout, but I actually really like playing two. That's because we're playing desire. So playing only one one blackout and it getting banished can be kind of detrimental also into a lot of decks like sprite floundries a blackout on its own could just be game winning so that's why i like to play the two drawing it is never a bad thing keep in mind you can reveal it off of the moye you can pitch it off the long yuan also if it's banished from the graveyard you get an extra token so this is a way that you can play around imperm with taie for example or play around valor which is picking up in popularity as well so for that reason i think the two blackout is actually really really powerful and that's it for the sword soul ratios i'm going to count inclusia as a sword soul monster this is a really good ratio I don't think I would change this up at all. And then we're playing the three Ashina, the one Vishuda, and two Adhara. So we cut the Tenyis down a lot. And I'm going to be honest with you, when I first cut them, I was like, this is kind of iffy because the deck does rely on needing Worms in hand to reveal off of Moye, to pitch off of Long Yuan. And so cutting the Tenyis down was kind of like unfortunate, but you have to do it in today's format because everyone's on the Bestial package. Now you still have to play three Ashuna. I think Ashuna specifically is really good because although it is a light and although it does get hit with the Bestial monster, it does give you access to your Vishuda, to your Adhara, and this helps you with a lot of your plays. So you specifically, I think, need to play the Ashuna. But again, we're only playing the one Vishuda and the two Adhara. Adhara is not bad because, again, it's not a light or a dark, so forget Adhara for now. But the one Vishuda, it was always really good to break boards, especially going second. But the thing is, you guys are seeing in this deck that we're playing so many hand traps that you actually don't need the Vishuda as much because breaking boards shouldn't be a thing when your opponent shouldn't be making boards in this deck, if that makes sense, right? This whole deck is pretty much built to beat the tier limit matchup which is your worst matchup but again the sword soul stuff in general has a really good matchup against the other decks right so that's why we're only playing the one vishuda it's all you're really going to need we're also playing the one destrudo destrudo obviously is really powerful it's also really good when you're forced to go second it gives you access to something like yazi but on top of that and i'll be honest with you the thing that i really like about destrudo is there are times where if you have like a moe let's say or a taie and you don't have any way to get the token on the board at least this is going to give you access to a tuner it's going to give you access to a seven and then you can continue your combos from there so i really like playing the one destruda i wouldn't cut this card i think this card is really really powerful in the deck like i said earlier we are playing two pot of desires it's your only real draw power in the deck and keep in mind you're maxing out on all the cards that you need to be maxing out on so you're never really afraid of desires banishing everything you need this applies to the hand traps as well because you're playing a lot of hand traps so again drawing into the extra ones especially when you open like a full combo so let's say you open moye plus emergence or Moye plus Long Yuan. Let's just say you open similar to that, and then you go Desires after you full combo and you draw into two hand traps. That's when this deck becomes really, really powerful. And then we're playing a ton of hand traps. I mean, like, I don't even know how many this is 15 hand traps, something like that. 
you're playing a ton of hand traps. Playing three Ash Blossom, two Ghost Bell. We're playing three Imperm. And so I'm going to stop there for now. We'll talk about the Bastilles later because the Bastilles are pretty self explanatory. But I want to talk about these hand traps. Keep in mind the really nice thing about Ash and Imperm specifically is they're also really good into Sprite. They're also really good into Flounderies. So the really cool thing about this deck is yes, this deck already, I keep saying it has a good matchup against those decks, but it really does, right? So if you already have a good matchup against those decks, but then you have hand traps that overlap between different decks, I mean, keep in mind, you can still Imperm a Kick Close. You can still Ash a Perilorino or Ash one of the mill effects, right? So it's still not bad into tier. Yes, these hand traps aren't the best into tier, but the really nice thing is you can still use them against tier. You can use them against flu. You can use them against Sprite. So Ash and Imperm, I think are really, really important. And I think it makes sense to play these two. We're playing the two Ghost Bell because getting milled in this deck can be detrimental. Yes, if you have a Taie and they mill some of your worms or whatever, it's not the worst thing in the world. But Ghost Bell, I think is really, really powerful to stop any of the graveyard effects. The card that I was thinking other than Ghost Bell was Valor, but I just don't see a reason to play Valor. The reason for that is because why do we cut on the Tengi monsters? It's so that we don't put darks and lights in the graveyard for free for our opponent. So if you're playing Valor, which is then a light monster, now yes, it's a hand trap, but then your opponent has access to bestials and whatnot. And I was like, it's very counterintuitive, you know? I also see a lot of builds playing the Valor now, and I, I kind of sit there and I'm like, mm, I don't know how I feel about this because the whole point of cutting the Tengis was so that you can not lose to the bestial cards because this deck otherwise doesn't lose to it. I mean, none of the Sword Souls are light or dark, right? So then to put an extra light monster in the deck kind of just doesn't make sense, right? So that's why I think I really like the two Ghost Bell. And it comes up in multiple matchups. It's not just the tier limit matchup. It's only bad against the Full Andres matchup. Everything else it's really good against. And then we're playing the three Bestial Magnemut, the three Druus Worm, as well as the one Sarnier. I like the seven Bestials. I think this is all you're going to need. The really cool thing about this deck is you can actually play Link Monsters. Okay, so I'm going to actually show you guys one of the craziest spice cards that I have in this deck that I think no one else plays. So uh, I think the Bestial Monsters are really powerful. Again, you need them in today's format. You need to be playing them. And that's why we're just maxing out on Magna and Druus and the one Sarnier for an extra name, right? So this way, at least if you draw Druus plus a Sarnier, you have two Bestials on that turn, right? So I think that's really powerful. 40 card main deck. I'm very, very satisfied with this main deck. I don't think I changed it up at all. It's very, very consistent. And I think this deck is very, very powerful into a lot of different matchups. Moving on to the extra deck here, we are playing the two Chi Shao. We're playing the one uh, Sinister Long Yuan as well as the one Cheng Ying. I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory. These are the standard ratios for the Sword Soul cards. We're playing the one Baron, of course. Now, I've seen a lot of people, if you don't have access to Baron, I understand that Baron's kind of an expensive card. You can play a card like Shen Shen. Shen Shen is also a very powerful card that you can play. So for that reason, if you guys wanted to try playing the Shen Shen instead of the Baron, Shen Shen's a nine. You can get to it with the Strudo in a lot of ways. If you have like Long Yuan on the board, you can Strudo with your token. That's a level four. And then you can use the Long Yuan and the Strudo into a Shen Shen. Same thing if you have like a Moye on the board. Of course, I think Baron is just as an Omni Negate is just better, but you know what I mean. Like Baron is still a really good card. Shen Shen is just a budget option for you guys. We're playing the one Draco Berserker. Now this card I'm going to talk about in just a second. It's not a bad card. There's another card in here that could be played instead, but we're playing the one Draco Berserker. Not bad. We're playing the two Boxy as well as the one Yazi. Yazi, of course, with the Strudo being back at one is a lot easier to get into. And this card is very, very powerful. Then for the Link Monsters, we're playing three Monk of the Tenyi. I'm actually deciding to play three. Now you can play two, but I like playing the three because to be honest with you, getting the non-effect monster on the field can sometimes be really relevant, especially to activate your Tengi monsters in the graveyard. But on top of that, it kind of helps when you have like the dead Tengis on the board. So I, I like playing three of the monk. You can play two. So again, I'm going to talk about this because you can play two monk and, and one Draco. There's one card that I want to put in here that's not in here. And again, I'm going to talk about that. It can be cut for the monk. Okay, so you can play two monk. And then the spicy card that I was talking about, and this card is absolutely crazy. Shout out to Alpha YGO for kind of bringing this up. Lanthalinkus or Lanforinkus. I don't know how to say this card properly, but this card is really spicy in the deck. So why is it spicy? It's just a link to doesn't really do anything. That's the point. A lot of the times if you're going second and you're forced to use the bestial monsters, what ends up happening is let's say your hand consists of like two tengis. Let's say you have an Ashuna and Vishuda. Now Ashuna and Vishuda is combo. You can combo with those two cards, but the problem becomes when you have a bestial monsters or two bestial monsters on the board and you don't know what to do with these. But what you can do is you can use the two bestials and let's say one of them is Druid Swarm and tell Lanphalinkus. Lanphalinkus puts a non-effect monster on the board, which means you can now use the Tengi Spirit effects. But then on top of that, you get the Druid Swarm Send, which is really, really powerful, right? So this is the really, really cool thing about this card where it's a generic Link 2 for you that gets the bestials on the field and synergizes with the Tengis, which is absolutely insane. So spicy tech, you don't go into it super often, but when you do it, this is very powerful, don't get me wrong. And then we're playing the one Dark. Dark is not bad 
that of course when you're playing the bestials it's another card that you can send these to the graveyard get the effects of like Druid Worm. then you can steal an opponent's monster helps you kind of push for game a lot of the time and then we're playing the one wallow wallow's not bad either with your bestial monsters it's pretty generic now what's the one card i wanted to talk about the one card i wanted to talk about or i guess maybe it could be two but the one card i already mentioned shen shen so it's the one card that i want to talk about and that's psychic and punisher psychic and punisher is a card that you know generically you can really go into especially with something like ash which is a level three tuner you can make that card don't get me wrong however it's very rare that you do now yes when it comes up it can be really powerful especially with something like the strudo because what ends up happening is the strudo puts your life points at four thousand let's say you're at the full eight thousand puts your life points at four thousand psychic and punisher does become a nice otk card so if you want you can play the one psychic and punisher and cut one monk or cut the draco berserker but i decided not to just because it feels like it never comes up so that's why i decided to play the three monk and the one draco but again you guys can always cut one of the monks for that card all right so that's it for the extra deck moving on to the side deck here now this is not like a completed side deck this is not something i've tested in terms of the side deck the main deck is tested i think the main deck is really good but in terms of the side deck i think this is something more of theory because it just makes a lot of sense in today's format so i'm actually playing three forbidden droplet i think this card is a board breaker going second is absolutely powerful also when you're forced to go first you can set this and it's really good because you can side this into matchups like the fluandries matchup the sprite matchup up even the mirror match which is really powerful because what ends up happening against the mirror match or against a lot of those decks the bestial monsters are not that important so against Flawandries, the mirror match even sprite i guess you can play you know bestial into sprite but it's not the best right so you have cards like droplet which inspectively just ends their turns or stops a lot of their combos that's why i really like the forbidden droplet i'm playing three regeki three lightning storm you have to be playing this i don't want to deal with Flawandries. i just want to see this break their board and otk i'm playing three judgment and as well as three anti-spell i really wanted something to, when i'm forced to go first a lot of the time if my opponent sees that i'm playing 10 hand traps 12 hand traps 15 hand traps whatever it is they might be like eh, maybe we shouldn't let him go second let him do all these things on us so you know i really like playing the anti-spell anti-spell is pretty good into a lot of the runic sprite matchups the runic uh, sky striker matchups that does come up and i've seen it a lot recently so for that reason i like to play the anti-spell and then solemn judgment is just a really good side deck card when you're forced to go first pretty much stops anything that you otherwise don't want to deal with all right so this side deck don't get me wrong it's not tested it's just a theory side deck but it just makes a lot of sense because it covers like every other matchup and uh, you can use it going first and going second which is really nice so that's it for the main deck that's it for this extra deck that's it for the side deck i don't show you guys the side deck too often but i wanted to show it to you guys here if you guys want to see the combos there is a combo video linked at the top of the description make sure you guys check that out so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy this is my take on sword soul for the format right now i think it makes a lot of sense you're playing a lot of cards in the main deck to pretty much beat the tier limit matchup the main deck also beats the sprite the fluandries matchup and then your side deck just helps you beat whatever specific matchup you're up against so i think this deck is very very powerful it's very very underrated in today's format and the really cool thing is because it is picking up in popularity maybe you'll see some people starting to side for it but at the moment there's not a lot of people siding for it tier limits doesn't really have the option of playing imperm or veiler in their main deck so all of your combos are gonna go off so i think this deck is very underrated i think you guys should try it out yourselves it's a deck that i got my most recent top on so i'm excited that it's picking back up in popularity if you guys did enjoy this video though make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu -Gi -Oh content just like this one we upload a ton of different kind of content here on the channel i think you guys are going to enjoy all the things that i have planned i'm i'm thinking of like i have like projects on projects being worked on right now all right so i hope you guys enjoy i'm of course going to continue doing these deck profiles the combo videos all that good stuff but there's a lot of cool stuff coming soon so make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all of that thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you and with that i think i was sad and out peace